Hey everyone, how goes it? Speg reporting in. Welcome aboard to part 4 in my Halo 3 Legendary Campaign series. Going off of the previous mission, we stormed down Savo Highway, took on a lot of Covenant armor, mainly choppers and wraiths, as we made our way towards the city of Voy. In this mission, we're going to storm the city and try to stop the Prophet of Truth. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to trade out one of my starting weapons for a battle rifle. A really quick way to manage that is to trade with the driver. If you find yourself getting ambushed in this first area, toss a grenade up by the door controls where the jackals will normally gather. From there you should be able to use the bow rifle and some melee to finish off the remaining grunts. Make sure it's all clear before you hit the switch, otherwise your war dog will be a magnet for incoming grenades. Now going down this next passage, you'll have a couple of options to work with. You can either take the walkway that's to your right, and you can take all these enemies on foot. The second option is to take control of the war dog and splatter as many as you can while you're moving as much as possible. You want to do this so that you don't take any incoming grenades, whether it's from the Grunts or Brutes, or from the Marines. For the time being, I'm done with that War Dog, so I'll get out, look around for any additional grenades, and take a Ghost and a Bubble Shield with me. It's on. Grab onto something. Kilo 2-3, this is forward unto dawn. I need a sit rep, Commander. Atmospheric disturbance is intensifying above the artifact, Admiral. Sierra 117. Moving as fast as he can, sir. I know he'll get it done. Now get to the center structure as quickly as possible when you come into the first lake bed, and you can take out all these enemies left behind by the dropship. Up top you'll find a sniper rifle and a missile pod. Use the missile pod against the ghosts. Let's get going, sir. Admiral's waiting for us to clear the anti air. After a short while, another phantom will come in and drop a wraith in the far corner. Now as for dealing with that wraith, I like to come over here, snipe the gunner off of it, and then I can safely approach it. As you close the distance on it, make sure to take a diagonal pattern and jump towards the wraith. That way you can avoid its mortars.
from this spot, then you should be able to take care of any remaining vehicles. When that anti-air wraith falls, a couple of banshees will swoop in, but you'll also have a friendly hornet to help deal with them. The store will open behind you too, so watch out for any reinforcements that try to get close. If I end up bringing the Wraith close to that door, two of the Brutes above will normally try to go for the turret that's on the Wraith. And what's strange about that is that they aren't very aggressive against me, unless if I engage first. If you go to the left and take these stairs up top, you'll get a pretty decent angle on the enemies above. That includes this one chieftain. So if you end up using the bubble shield or if you want to look to trade it out, uh, look around for a power drain off of one of the brutes, and then grab a turret for this next bit of action. You'll want the turret for these drones. Try to get yourself in a good spot where you have some overhead protection. As long as you just poke your head in and out of cover, you shouldn't have too much trouble against them. Then grab a rocket launcher and you can go on. I have defied gods and demons. Shotgun! Mount up! Rockets in back! You gotta move fast! Hunt hard! We've got anti-air rates in the next lake bed, Chief. Now as I come into this area, I want to look around for one of the two choppers so I can snipe the driver and use that vehicle later on. Careful when the uh, phantoms leave off these ghosts behind. You really don't want to be sticking your head out of cover. Now, unfortunately, I lost that chopper that I really wanted, so I'm gonna have to stick with the mongoose for a little bit longer. Fortunately, I do have a plan B or a plan C if things really go sideways. So instead of using that chopper, I'm going to use a missile pod to deal with the remaining vehicles. It's not the most perfect strategy, but it certainly works.
If you come to the top of the screen, you'll find another sniper rifle at the top. And then I also like to ditch that sniper rifle for a short while and use this bow rifle. There's also a grab lift here too. So as they announce that a scarab is coming in, get to the top of the structure by taking the ladder and then use the grav lift to board the scarab. Be careful as you do this strategy because you do leave yourself in a somewhat vulnerable position against the enemies that are on the scarab. One of the brutes does have a brute shot, but he's probably your biggest problem. Aside from the grunts that go for the turrets. I generally prefer this strategy instead of using the missile pod or the marines to bring down the legs of the scarab. So anyway, once you've cleared out most or all the enemies on the scarab, destroy the core and then get away from the vehicle. Well done, Chief. I'm sending in a few pelicans. One more target, Chief. It's a Covenant AA gun in the next area. Take it down and Lord Hook can start his attack run. We've got this area locked down, sir. Follow us. We'll get you through. So when you're all done, come back for the sniper rifle and also pick up the power drain if you still have it. So before leaving this room, make sure you can grab one of the two machine gun turrets. This will be really useful in the early stage of this next battle. So going in, you'll have four brutes that are engaging the marines present. Focus though on the ones that are on the lower level before you take on the ones that are on the upper level. One of these brutes has a carbine, another will have a brute shot. Look out for them. Now this is where I like to put the power drain into action because the it'll take off the armor of the brutes and then I can finish them off with a snipe rifle. Coming in here, there's going to be four more brutes, so you can try to use your grenades or the rocket launcher to help finish them. Now that was an optional act that I did, sniping the explosive. That will save these four civilians. But 
what's going to be more important is taking down these hunters outside. Now, if they're close enough together, three rockets will kill them. And at this point, you really don't need the rocket launcher, but it can come in handy against the brutes above. Now, I was surprised that Chieftain did not use his invincibility once he the uh, bodyguards fell. Normally, that is what happens. So I was expecting him to have a flare or something else of that equivalent. So anyway, as soon as you dealt with that first bit of action, uh, use up the rest of your rockets against the grunts or jackals and brutes. And then you can grab a bow rifle and deal with the remaining enemies. So now that I'm all done with that part, I'm going to go back and see if that gravity hammer is still available, which it is. If you don't have the invincibility, I would stick with a bow rifle and a snipe rifle. As I go into this last part, there's only going to be one enemy that I'm going to use the sniper against. And then I have the option to either stick with that weapon and the hammer, or I can trade off the snipe rifle for a bow rifle. You'll find one hidden bow rifle in this little cubby, so you can either use that yourself or trade it with one of your allies. So when I get to this part, uh, this is where I like to try to snipe that chieftain at the top of the hill. And if you do it right, three shots from the sniper rifle will kill him. But if you don't, he'll retreat further back. And that's not a huge problem. So I'm still going to take the gravity hammer with me, grab a bow rifle before I move up the hill. He's got a hammer. So as you get up here, uh, locate the brutes that are off to the right, and then once you get close, use the invincibility so that you can safely take them all out. Don't take the remaining grunts and jackals too lightly when you get to this point.
This is the way the world ends. Alright, so after destroying the AA gun, that will finish up this level. So, I would say compared to the other missions I've done so far in this game, uh, there was a lot of improvising involved with completing certain parts of the mission, including the second lake bed, and also the final stretch where I ended up using the invincibility and gravity hammer to help finish off a number of brutes. So I'll mention that for that last part, if you don't end up working with the grav hammer and invincibility, the bow rifle will be very sufficient against the grunts and jackals. You can use the snipe rifle to safely take out the brutes. And then you can finish off that core with uh, a number of different methods. Shooting it or using grenades will get the job done. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this guide. Thank you all for tuning in on this episode. I really appreciate all the support, especially as of late with some of the milestones that I've hit on the channel. And I will catch you in the next episode, which will be Bloodgate. Take care, everyone. <laughs>